Hi everybody, this is Gat Sat for the Sad Truth. Today I'd like to continue uh, with the theme that I originally touched upon in uh, Sad Truth 227, where I uh, looked at whether hypotheses can be, quote, racist and bigoted. Let's suppose that we'd like to investigate the following hypothesis. Men are more likely to commit sexual assaults than women. This is a hypothesis very clearly stated, which I can then go out and look for the data that would allow me to properly test this hypothesis. And then the data will come back without any doubt that men are much more likely to be sexual aggressors uh, than women. And that, of course, is relevant in all sorts of ways. It is relevant in that uh, if a woman or possibly a man is deciding to walk down an alley, they use that statistical regularity, they use the fact that they understand the patterns as they exist in the real world in deciding that if they're going to go down a dark alley and they see four men in that dark alley, they might be a bit more cautious or maybe refrain from going down the dark alley as opposed to if they were to see four women in that same alley. Now that doesn't mean that uh, the people in question who are deciding whether to go down dark alley or not are sexist. And it doesn't mean that the fact that we recognize that men are more likely to be aggressors, sexual aggressors than women, that we are marginalizing half the world's population known as men. Uh, that statement holds true even though most men are not aggressors and even though some women are aggressors. Now this is a uh, logic that should be clear to someone who has a functioning brain and who is five years old. But apparently, we need to explain it in the world that we live in today. Let's take another example. Suppose I've got four elderly men who are in the same alley, or four young men in the same alley. Of course, on average, most people would be more cautious when they are exposed to the reality that there are four young men in that alley than four elderly men, because they recognize that young men are more likely to be violent than older men. Again, this is not ageism, right? It is a statistical regularity that we use because we have functioning evolved brains to navigate through the world, right? Even though, again, we recognize that most young men are not violent, and even though we recognize that some elderly men are violent, on average, statistically, we know that young men are more dangerous than older men. This brings us to the key point that I wanted to make today. So let's now take this exact idea and see whether we could apply it to other groupings. So for example, if most people are comfortable saying that men are sexually more dangerous than women and young men are more likely to be violent than older men, could we ask the following question? Are men of group A, whatever group A is, more likely to commit rape in than men who are not from group A. In a given country, in a particular time, uh, per capita adjusted. That's a perfectly valid hypothesis, and we can go out and test that hypothesis by looking for the relevant data. Now, here's where the faux liberals, the quote, progressives, the naturally lobotomized, the cowardly castrated will suddenly develop a instantaneous lobotomy. No, simply posing that question is inherently racist because by you then potentially finding out a empirical reality that does not fit the politically correct narrative, well then that's a problem because it marginalizes all those men who might be in group A who are not dangerous, who are not likely to commit uh, sexual assaults and so on, right? It's the exact same logic. We are simply replacing one set of groupings with another. The reality is that we could find this data. That data exists. So not only will the social justice warriors and the faux liberals argue that to posit that hypothesis is racist, then to find out that there is such a reality, is itself racist. And now just to complete the infinite cascade of 
false accusations of racism, to the extent that that empirical reality exists, it must be due to the indigenous population who drove these otherwise noble men to commit these sexual acts. So all roads lead to false accusations of racism. This is what uh, we've, we've come to, where we can't have open and honest discussions about realities that are so trivially obvious and that ultimately will help us navigate through all sorts of important public policy decisions, right? For example, if we wanted to find out why is it that men from group A are more likely to commit sexual assaults within a particular time period in a particular country than men of who are not from group A, well, it might help us to understand that reality, right? It makes no sense to simply say, I'm going to ignore that reality. As a matter of fact, to ask that question is racist, never mind to find out that that uh, empirical reality might hold true is racist. Uh, I don't want to know about it, right? How dare you ask that question? Well, then how could I try to resolve this issue? I mean, am I willing to sacrifice the safety of all the women in that society at the altar of political correctness? Is my desire to not appear, quote, bigoted and racist more important than the sanctity and dignity of the women uh, who deserve to be protected? Uh, by the way, women who might themselves be members of group A or not members of group A, right? So if what you care about as a faux liberal is the protection of women, is it not incumbent on you to then say, well, might there be something in the inherent culture and in the inherent religion, maybe in the water that they drink, that makes men from group A more likely to commit this particular act than other men? So we have to remove the shackles of political correctness and use the method of that science offers us to navigate through these issues, right? That's it. It's that simple. But again, what I find astonishing is that I even have to make such a clip because I see the endless ways by which people are shackled from accepting that which is clearly before their eyes. So anyways, let's uh, speak openly about these matters. Let's do so respectfully, politely, uh, with tact, but let's never sacrifice the truth at the altar of some misguided notion of political correctness. Have a good weekend, everybody. Talk to you soon. Ciao.